what we thought is let's invest in an EA program because our employees obviously had been in the industry for years. They had connections with our clients. They've networked and obviously have shared ideas about industry trends, products, and, and a lot more, right? And we wanted to tap into those networks and obviously use EA to get there. Hello and welcome to Masters of Comms, the podcast for transformative communication techniques straight from the pros. In the next episode, our guest expert will share her innovative approach to grow brand awareness through employees and partners. I'm Lamar Williams, host of Masters of Comms, as well as head of partnerships at Sociable. And today I'm accompanied by our guest from SolidCAD, Daniela Delgado, marketing and communications manager. Hello, Daniela, and welcome to Masters of Comms. Hello, Lamar. So, Daniela, would you mind taking a minute to introduce yourself to our listeners? Yeah, for sure. So, my name is Daniela. I am the Marketing and Communications Manager at Solicad. I've been in the field for now over 12 years and specifically in this position at Solicad for about seven. I basically handle and oversee everything from the marketing communications front. So that's really the strategy behind our marketing activities from face-to-face events, digital, email, and obviously, as you know, a lot more basically across Canada. So it is a national role. Wow, it's very large. And before we get started, would you mind giving us a brief overview of SolidCAD? Yeah, for sure. So SolidCAD is one of the largest software reseller companies and professional services companies within Canada. We offer consulting services, training, support, technology for clients, basically within the architecture, engineering, construction, civil infrastructure, and manufacturing industries. So that is a lot, you know, we're handling. But we do offer basically software, hardware from some of the largest technical companies. So some of our listeners might be familiar with them. That would be Autodesk, Bluebeam, Lumion, and Chaos Group in Matterport. We do have over 12 partners, but I thought I would just, you know, name some of the few ones that maybe are familiar to some of our listeners. Perfect. And now just to jump right in, you know, what we've been hearing is that gaining brand awareness is an ongoing challenge for many companies today. And we're arriving at a point where there's a significant amount of content that is being produced, but not being absorbed by a corporation's target audience. You know, currently organizations are seeking out ways to transform the way they communicate both internally and externally to capture their audiences. What I would say is employee advocacy is one of those solutions. Did you experience the same situation at SolidCAD? And maybe could you address why you have chosen to leverage EA or employee advocacy to grow your brand reputation? Yeah, so we definitely experienced a similar situation at SolidCAD. Like, especially during COVID, we saw some industries halt while others boomed. And being on the tech side of things, SolidCAD was one of those companies that grew at an exponential rate. With that, you know, we hired and onboarded a lot of staff to support this growth in such a short period of time. What we noticed is that our smaller communications department, which at that time only had three people, found it extremely difficult to to help communicate our brand image to all of these new employees that we were onboarding and obviously ensuring that the employees that have been at the company for a while were also consistent with this, you know, brand of ours and how customers viewed us. At that time, we had a crazy amount of marketing activities that were, you know, happening online. And obviously there was an influx of communications that were coming from all directions to our customers, right? Not just from us. And we knew we needed to just stand out and obviously invest in ways to help get content or a message across internally as well as externally. It just, you know, was really dependent on our group of people. And at that time, only three people, it was nearly impossible to do, especially with the growth. What we thought is, let's invest in an EA program because our employees obviously had been in the industry for years. They had connections with our clients. They've networked and obviously have shared ideas about industry trends, products, and and a lot more, right? And we wanted to tap into those networks and obviously use EA to get there. In establishing that EA was the way to tap into your employee networks and stand out with your clients and assumingly potential clients, what were some of the challenges that you were experiencing prior to implementing your program? So like I mentioned before, I think the biggest challenge was having to keep that consistent brand image across the organization. Although like we as the marketing and communications department are responsible for crafting that image and the content that surrounds it, what we notice is just the amount of activities that were happening online that went beyond basically the marketing initiatives that my team would see, like the webinars or events. It was really hard to basically see what employees were communicating to customers, right? How were they engaging with customers? 
online or through their social networks like LinkedIn. So it became that much harder to really manage that same content, even though we had it look a particular way, we guided a lot of our employees on what it looks like. It's just we didn't have that control that we see with an EA program. So if I understand it correctly, you were worried about the type of content that your employees were already generating about your business, which was outside of your control. So in implementing this program, did you decide on inviting specific people to participate in the program or is employee advocacy open to everyone in the company? When we made the decision to basically sign on an EA program, we wanted to approach it in a very strategic way. We didn't just want to sign on everyone, spend the time on resources and training, and then only have a handful of people using it. We really wanted to ensure that our company was logging in regularly, engaging with the platform, but also adopting it really well too. Our first phase focused on selected group of people. We usually had about five to 10 team members of each of our industry teams. So a total of four people. These groups, you know, included sales, our professional services team, as well as executive leadership. We chose these three groups because they either had consistent relationships with our customers or had the knowledge to share additional content through the system. We did test it out for about six months and provided analytics back to the directors as well as executive leadership. We did host, you know, open feedback sessions to see where we could improve the content that was created and posted and really encourage people to also submit content through the system. What we wanted to ensure is that we had a lot of feedback and online use, and we were really opening it up to people to obviously engage with it as much as possible before we open it up to, you know, the 184 employees that we have. And I can imagine that maybe onboarding can sometimes be daunting to that end employee or even to the executives. So maybe what role does education and training play in building brand reputation through employees? And how do you ensure that they're equipped with the knowledge and resources they need to represent your brand effectively? I mean, it plays a crucial role. It's great for building your brand reputation. If your employees don't have the resources or the knowledge to take that brand to the next level and promote it using this EA program, then you're kind of only doing half of the work, right? Part of our launch and introduction to using an EA program like Sociable was to provide ongoing engagement, whether it was hosting regular office hours on the system itself, asking questions, getting feedback. We wanted to just encourage our users to engage with us and the platform as much as possible. And in that, you know, my team provided tips to users, had directors of each of the industry teams kind of be the leaders to ensure that they're also enforcing it in use. And we just really wanted to you know, equip them with the with the right usage of that program and effectively as effectively as possible. And we did create an incentive program that would recognize and provide a gift card to members that, you know, either shared or created the most content. So we did want to encourage that engagement as well. Can you give us some of the results of what happened when you first started testing this? How did it affect your content and sharing potentially? And how long did the program run? So we ran it for six months and it was a test group of 48 people across the organization that included the executive management, sales and technical departments. We looked at two KPIs that measured adoption, specifically one, the registered employees, and then obviously the active users. We did look at some other KPIs just to kind of report back to management, specifically one that is built in within Sociable, which is, you know, cost savings when introducing a EA program, because let's face it, senior leadership wants to know, we spent this money, did we save anything? Uh, And with that being said, we also looked at specifically the percentage of our employees that generated content. So that gave us a little bit more information, not just on adoption, but also the engagement with the platform. So then that way we could kind of see, you know, where is there other information that maybe the marketing and communications department isn't creating that our employees are making sure is added to the program. It sounds like you've established a significant foundation for your EA program to succeed. And as EA has traditionally been a resource for employee scenarios, from what I understand, you've also envisioned a similar program for your partners. So first off, can you explain what a partner is to you and maybe why you would like to make a program for partner advocacy? 
Yeah. So the partners for our specific division are actually the vendors we work with. It's ultimately the companies that we sell their re- like their software or their hardware for. This includes like additional companies that we're open in the future to obviously have them resell our technologies. So just for listeners to understand, Solicad isn't just a reseller for these technologies. We are also an innovator. We've created our own in-house products that our programming team has developed. And we're obviously in the future looking to partner up with companies and obviously have these companies use an EA program to share information about our products, about our services, to kind of get that message across. And there's actually one organization that will be selling our products within Europe. So this is kind of a a great way to have an EA program to communicate the brand to a global audience and not even just within Canada. Perfect. And with the addition of this program compared to that of your employees, how do you ensure that your partners understand and are aligned with your messaging and how will you help them communicate this message effectively to their external audiences? Our goal is to really just ensure that whatever story we're telling and that message that we've crafted really aligns with our partner's goals too. We've been pretty strategic and savvy with how we develop our marketing strategy and ensuring that basically all of our initiatives have always been aligned with what our partners are doing, what industry trends are happening, and then just highlighting our customers and where they're at and where are their gaps in terms of technology, services, support, and so on. So our story really just help provide more detail to the Canadian market specifically, because a lot of the vendors we do work with are in the US and they have difficulty promoting and crafting a message for the Canadian market. So really what we're hoping to do is create a little bit more of a localized content base within the EA program and have our partners share a lot of that that they have difficulty sharing right now. Great. So how do you plan to evolve your partner advocacy program in the future to meet their evolving needs? And what steps will you take to ensure their success? So I think it is a little too early right now to kind of say where are things going to go in the future, just because we are in the phase one of our launch and we are talking about opening this up to partners as well as, you know, the first half of our our company and onward. So I would say, you know, we want to really focus on the internal strategy before we start opening and talking about, you know, where are things going to go for partners? Well, we'll definitely have to keep an eye out on how both of your programs evolve. But before we go, could you provide us with your three recommendations to start an advocacy program in order to help build corporate brand reputation? Yeah. So I would say first, start with the why. Like, what are your goals with an employee advocacy program? Like, what do you want to achieve? by implementing it? Is it just to market events and get more registrations? Is it about promoting the brand and focusing on crafting, you know, a uniform message? Or is it about just having like influencers in your company, like be the champions of getting that message across for whatever it may be? I think defining why and aligning that with goals and KPIs is sort of your starting point. Secondly, you know, come up with a launch plan. I think this is crucial. I always start small and then kind of open it up to the rest of the company, focusing on a Test group really allows you to get employee feedback, make changes accordingly before launching it to, you know, like a huge amount of individuals that might not get widely received. So starting off small, I think is, you know, the best way to approach it. And obviously, you know, work with people who are already the influencers or already, you know, active in social media, because it does make the process a little bit easier. And you're getting insight and feedback from people who are already active within the social space. And then lastly, just be consistent. The worst is, you know, launching a program like this and then nothing new happens in like five, six months after launch. And then it just kind of dies down, you know, ride the momentum. If you notice a drop of people, you know, logging into the system or engaging with it or even creating content, create internal programs to get that usage back up and having people on there create some sort of gamification portion that really allows employees to feel recognized and celebrated that they are being a pro using the system and obviously leverage, you know, upper management to help push the use of that system too. And then honestly, just make it fun when you are, you know, recognizing people with these internal campaigns. That way you just have that morale boosted and people really do want to use the system and encourage more content sharing and creation. Daniela, we've arrived pretty much the end of our podcast, but I would like to ask you one final question that I enjoy asking all of our guest experts of Masters of Combs. Would you mind sharing with us the title of a book or a film that had a significant impact on you recently and why? Yeah, so recently I actually 
actually watch the movie Air that tells the story of how Nike got Michael Jordan, you know, to sign for them and one of the biggest sneaker deals, I think, in history. It was an awesome film. It just really showed the power of storytelling and how their marketing department at that time got MJ to basically sign with them. And honestly, the cast was amazing. There's Matt, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Viola Davis. I mean, just to name a few, but definitely worth the watch. Wow. I will definitely have to take a look at that. At this point, Daniela, I want to thank you for joining us and being a part of Masters of Comms. Thank you for having me. It was such a pleasure speaking to you today and just kind of talking about, you know, introducing an EA program. It was it was a great talk. Thank you again. This has been Masters of Comms, the podcast for transformative communication techniques straight from the pros. Follow us here to get the next episode. See you soon. Thank you.